anxious because it's a short one <laughs> planned that way. Um, so anyway, turn with me, if you will, to Isaiah in chapter 40. This is totally different than what was originally planned. And, and after the bulletin was printed, I have uh, changed course. And so we are looking at Isaiah in chapter 40 here this morning. And, and um, let me just pray before we uh, just look into this briefly. God, we thank you for your grace in our lives. Thank you for all that you do for us. God, thank you that you are an awesome and great God. And God, just uh, as we pause here for a few moments, just remind us of your greatness, we pray. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, um, I guess, first of all, I'd like to just share a, a brief praise. I'm so thankful for each of you here. You know, this has been kind of a rough last few months. <laughs> and uh, actually a rough year, too. <laughs> If you go all the way back to February, you know we had that water line, main line that broke uh, from the well to the house, and the, the basement flooded, or I should say we have a bi-level, and the lower section flooded, and, and boy, that was a lot of work, cutting out drywall, putting new drywall up, mudding, you know, sucking all that water up, and it's just like, whew. And then the furnace went out, and, and just all, all that, uh, memories are there, unpleasant memories, and cold nights and and um but then through all that i just i think back of your kindness and your grace and you know, i just remember the lewis's came over and put a new line in for us and it's like oh my goodness and and people brought us firewood and and heaters and and so much and you took care of us in so many different ways and and then you know just uh, recently this last fall it's like i guess um kind of a abruption a little bit in the schedule when Sue's sister's husband died and then we took in Sue's dad and he had been living with us since August actually and so that was a lot of extra care for Sue and just appreciate her so much but appreciate just recently we were down and out with COVID and you guys praying for us and sending us emails and cards and bringing us food and thank you thank you so much for all your care but let's get to Isaiah 40, okay? <laughs> okay, just just uh, again, just briefly, and um, hopefully this uh, clicker will work, but I don't know what you get did this last Thanksgiving, but Thanksgivings can be really busy, right? <laughs> Crazy busy. Um, some of you, um, I, I know many of you, plan meals, and you had family in, we had family in. My wife planned this great meal, and just a, kind of a busy day. Some of you may have watched football. How many of you watch football? How many of you are Ohio State fans? Ouch. No. <laughs> um, you know, some of you watch football. Some of you ladies. Any ladies go Black Friday shopping this last week? Uh, there we go. We have a, we have a, oh, we have some real, real challenged uh, uh, ladies. That was quite a challenge, wasn't it, this last Friday, Black Friday? <laughs> I did that one time, and that was enough. <laughs> But you know, Thanksgiving can get so busy, can it? We can, we can get so full of busyness, and and I don't know about you. I don't know how your Thanksgiving went this this year and this last week, but I know it can be crazy busy at times. And but anyway, I just want to um, whoop, went too fast here. Um, Isaiah chapter forty, this very first verse we're looking at. Isaiah basically he's he's preaching to God's people, the the nation of Israel, and the He's, he's basically saying, hey, <laughs> I think you may have forgot something here. Uh, they were living in difficult times. We're going to look at it in just a second. But he said, have you not known? Have you not heard? Have you not known? Have you not heard why? Well, he has this, this call to remember. And you know, so many times the people of Israel forgot God. And this is one of those instances. If you look at the context and you, the first 40 chapters, our first 39 chapters of Isaiah are about the people of God who forgot God. <laughs> The people of Israel forgot God, and they were living in difficult times. And, and we can forget because of busyness. They forgot because of brokenness. And we can forget because of brokenness as well. You know, they were actually living in captivity in Babylon because of their waywardness, because of them forgetting about God. And, and God's like, remember me? <laughs> hey, remember me? Don't forget. And, and so the people of God, um, they, they were forgetting who God was. And here they were in Babylon, exiled from their home, exiled from their, 
their land of Israel, and, and they were under the control of the Babylons. And that was not a good thing, by the way. Let me remind you, the Babylons were the ruthless people. Okay, they went in, they, they devoured nations. They went in and they, they put the fear of God in all the nations around them. I mean, they literally, they would go in and they'd capture people and drag them back to Babylon behind horses, ropes and fish hooks in their flesh. They wanted to put the fear in the nations around them. They were a ruthless and the people of God were there in Babylon and they were thinking, huh, Maybe we do need to remember God. Well, you know, we can go through difficult times. Um, we've had a difficult year. I know many of you have had a difficult year. But we need to be reminded of who God is and his greatness. And that's exactly what, what's happening here in Isaiah 40. Isaiah says, have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. We know that the God that we serve is an everlasting God. <laughs> he has no beginning. He has no end. That's, that's good news, right? <laughs> He, he was not created. He was never created. He was always there in the beginning. And guess what? He'll always be there right to the very <laughs> eternity, okay? Throughout all eternity. So no beginning and no end. And so we're reminded that. The, the writer also tells us, who is David, he's not only eternal, but he's also almighty. By the way, nothing's too difficult for him. No matter what you're going through, no matter what life is thrown at you, don't ever forget this. Nothing is too difficult for our God. Amen? <laughs> he is an almighty God. Here's what Isaiah says. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. And we also find out by that statement, he's a big God. He is a mighty God, right? I don't know if you know this guy. I couldn't even pronounce his name. But you know this guy deadlifted 900 and what is it, 40 903 pounds, deadlifted, 903 pounds. He also bench pressed 630 pounds. Holy cow. And he squatted 881 pounds. He is like the, the strongest, considered strongest man alive today. This guy is, he's strong. <laughs> but you know what? I'm reminded of God who created the universe this entire universe of ours, with a simple command of his voice. He said, let there be, and there was. <laughs> just amazing. And you think about our, our universe, just think about this. Let this soak in for a second. It takes three days to reach the moon by spacecraft, seven months to the closest planet, Mars, 15 months to reach Venus, six years to reach Jupiter, nine and a half years to reach Pluto by a spacecraft. And God commanded it all in a word. I am told that the universe is this big, 93 billion light years. 93 billion light years. How do you even wrap your mind around that? And God created the universe. He created the heavens and the earth, and he created it by the power of his command. Boy, this is a good reminder. Look at the verse. <laughs> have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, who does not faint or go weary. He doesn't get tired. By the way, this is me after the turkey dinner. <laughs> Do you guys get tired after turkey? <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't, part of us because I think I you know, have the pneumonia going on too. But, you know, yesterday I laid down for a nap in the afternoon, and I slept three and a half hours. I was like, what happened? <laughs> but, you know, we get tired. We, we, and, and Isaiah says, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and even the young men shall fall and get exhausted. He says, it doesn't matter whether you're young or old. There is a point where you just can't go anymore. <laughs> and we get tired, don't we? But guess what? God doesn't. He, he never gets tired. And, and whatever the task is at hand, it doesn't take him any more effort to do it than, than any other thing that we would start to do. But anyway, he never gets tired. And this one is a good one. He knows everything. Aren't you thankful for that? Have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth? He does not faint or grow weary. And his understanding is unsearchable. 
He knows the beginning from the end. He knows all about us. And by the way, he knows your name. He knows your story. He knows your heart. He knows everything. And tell you what, that's comforting, isn't it? He knows all about us. The one who made the stars, the one who brought the universe into existence, he's the one that knows all about us. And here's the great promise. Are you ready? Isaiah 40, our 40, 29, 30. He gives strength to the weary. How many of you need strength this morning? <laughs> he increases the power of the weak. Even you grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will not walk and they will walk and not be uh, faint. By the way, when we were celebrating our Thanksgiving with the kids, right in the middle of the meal, looked out and there was a bald eagle flying right over our house practically. I'm thinking, oh my goodness. That's awesome. And, and with this Isaiah 40 passage, is, God is just confirming to me. It's like, I'm right here with you. <laughs> I'm right here with you. What's th this promise is a great promise, but one thing I just want to bring out is this. It's a conditional promise. What's the condition? Hoping, trusting, waiting upon the Lord. That's the condition. God promises it. He, he's going to give it to it. All we need to do is trust him for it. Are you trusting him for that great promise? I am. I am. Well, we are going to um, actually go into communion right now. And I want to have the deacons come forward here. And um, well, I actually asked Ron and Dennis to, to read the scripture. And um, also Robert is going to um, come forward as well. Do, does anybody need a cup of 